Good afternoon. I'm going to talk about a concept that may, you may not know very much about, but I promise you by the time I get to the end of my presentation, you'll be affected by what I'm talking about. We've been talking about social networks all day. You're familiar with these icons from Facebook and Twitter, YouTube and LinkedIn. But I'm going to talk about something a little bit different. I've been kind of dawdling with this for two years, and it came to a head this year because my wife had an operation called pedicle subtraction osteotomy. And in essence, it was spine surgery. And before she had the spine surgery, we went to the internet and we searched on the internet to get more information. When that wasn't enough, we actually went to social networks and began to query the social networks. And we found more informed information from the social networks and thus my presentation. So I'm gonna talk about this concept called credence goods. What is that? Well, First of all, social networks build engagement needs and social authority. What do we get from social networks? Identity, conversations, sharing, presence, relationships, reputations, and we also form groups. What is a credence good? It's an economic term that involves a distribution of goods and services based on trust alone. Think about the things we buy on trust alone. In essence, we don't test it. The experts give us the information, and we accept it based on trust alone. That's called a credence good. Well, what's wrong with that? Most of us are never really sure how much of that we need or whether we need it at all in terms of this credence good. We go to the experts, and the experts determine how much we need and whether we need it at all. The problem is this creates an asymmetry between the buyer and the seller and also encourages the seller to be fraudulent and also to cheat us at times. This credence good is reflected in three concepts. Sometimes we go to these people and we get overtreatment, we get too much. Sometimes we go, we get undertreated, we get not enough. And sometimes we get overcharged. I'm gonna talk about this this afternoon in terms of three systems. The healthcare system, car repairs, and cab drivers. Understanding the role of overtreatments Undertreatments and overcharging through social networks can enhance the social authority I just talked about and maximize the consumer's ability to ask intelligent questions, make intelligent decisions, and associated actions. Okay, social networks and online healthcare sites. 7.5% of patients in Canadian hospitals are harmed by their care. One in 13, 9,250 to 23,750 die in Canadian hospitals every year as a result of adverse events. 37% of these adverse events were determined to be preventable. 16% or 4.3 million adult Canadians believed that a medical error occurred when they received health care in the last two years. There are a number of health websites that have been developed. Some were mentioned earlier. Here are a few others. They are concerned with patient safety. There's a WebMD. There's CyberMD. There's medical knowledge for everyone on Facebook. And there are actual operations and procedures on YouTube if you dare to look at them. They're there. They're very graphic, but they're there. There are also ratings of doctors, hospitals, and clinics on RateMDs.com and HealthCareReviews.com. So monitoring these credence goods using interactions in social networks may produce a more informed consumer who can ask more intelligent questions of doctors, hospitals, and healthcare systems. Asking more intelligent questions may contribute to improve quality healthcare. What are some examples of some healthcare questions you can ask? If you were me, would you have the surgery? What's the worst that can happen if I don't have the surgery? How many of these surgeries have you performed? And what's the success rate with these surgeries? One of my personal favorites is, I understand you wanted to discharge me from the hospital tonight, but I don't feel very comfortable that I can manage myself at home. This may cause you to stay an extra night at the hospital. Let's go on from there to talk about social networks, credence goods, and online car repairs. The switch is from human repair to now car repair. What happens in these situations? Sometimes these people sell us unnecessary fluids, such as antifreeze, brake fluid, 
and power steering fluid. They repair something that we'd even ask them to repair. And oftentimes they use the same part or use part in replacing repair on our car. So what can we do about this? We could check out the repair shop's history with a better business bureau. We can make sure that the repair shop honors any existing warranty so that we don't pay for parts and labor covered by the extended warranty. We can ask for written repairs, or we can actually watch car repairs on YouTube. There's also a site called At Auto Media on Twitter that gives automotive, automotive advice, car reviews, photos, and maintenance costs. There's also www.automedia.com. Keep good maintenance records. We all know that. Get a second opinion or estimate from another shop. And try to talk to the mechanic who's actually working on your car. What kind of questions can we ask mechanics? Are your mechanics licensed? Can you give me a written signed estimate? Would you check whether the repair is under warranty? And would you return all the old parts that are replaced? And the final part of my talk is social networks, credence goods, and online cab rate, cab sites. Some of you have been, had this ex experience where you've gone on cab rides. What happens? We get charged the wrong cab rate. They say the meter is broken. It's not switching it on or setting it to zero at the start of the trip. Unlicensed drivers, extra charges. Sometimes they charge for heat, air conditioning, and even luggage. Long hauling, which is taking the scenic route. Taking it to the wrong location and saying it's your fault. And the sleight of hand, where you give them $30, they actually count only 20 How much do you tip a cabbie? These are questions you actually can find out online. Always get a metered cab, because the meters always run cheaper than flat rates. Negotiate the rates in advance. Research the route and actually use your phone GPS for that process. There's a site called taxifinder.com. There's also a site called The Happy Cabbie on YouTube. There's taxigourmet.com, which actually shows you not only how to get to various places, but also what to eat when you get near them. And also there's a site called Scam Busters. So what are some examples of things you can ask cab drivers? Can you give me an estimate beforehand of the cost of this cab ride? I'd appreciate if you wouldn't take me the scenic route, which will cost me more money. And do you have a meter, and is it working? And then finally, is your license posted? May I see it? I have bad news, I have good news, and I have better news. The bad news is what you don't know can hurt or even kill you, because cause your car not to run properly or not at all, or pay, you have to pay higher cab rates. The good news is understanding social networks and credence goods can reduce medical errors, unnecessary car repairs, and high cab rates. The better news is that through coaching, Consumers learn how to search online social networks that can potentially change the negative impact of these credence goods. I have a little model I'm developing. Historically, we looked at these experts and we got advice from them. The doctor told us what to do, we did it. The car repair, car mechanic said repair it, we repaired it. The cab driver said it's X amount of dollars, we accept it. A more reliable model using social networks becomes interactive becomes interactive in the sense we go to these sites, we get information from these sites, patients talk about the experiences with doctors, people who have the car repaired talk about experiences with certain mechanics and certain repair shops, and people who are in certain cities talk about the experiences with cabs. I'd like to leave you with this quote from Gandhi. Consciously or unconsciously, every one of us does render some service or other if we cultivate the habit of doing this service deliberately, our desire for service will steadily grow stronger and will make not only our own happiness, but that of the world at large. Thank you.